Good morning, YouTube. What is going on, guys? Yes, my door is open because look how beautiful it is. It's about 12 degrees out, super warm for February. This beautiful fog, this haze just covering everything. Look at that. Oh my gosh. So of course we came to the Rouge Valley. We're gonna get a tutorial, tips, tricks, moody photography. Let's get it going. And all right guys, hope you enjoyed that little B-roll clip. I am now, we call this Snake Hill. It's this wide open area where people would come to bargaining and stuff. And I knew I wanted to come here just so I could see all of the fog. All of it, like look at this. Right? It just goes, it goes, it goes, it goes. So my thing is, I truly believe that you have to keep moving positions until you find the picture you're happy with. Like if you get a picture and you're like, meh, it's all right, don't settle for it. Cause you know there's a spot there. Like you know you can get a sick photo. It may just be moving 10 steps to a different angle, right? So as an example right here, I started way over there way over here in the background shooting upward shooting the trees this way now I came over here I want to try to use these dead plants and these trees as a rule of thirds to show perspective of the fog and again showing depth of things in the foreground so you can see here right now something you guys know that I love are leading lines and shooting with a subject so Kiro that's why I always bring it right Kiro Kiro come look at this you see that pathway right going down there if Kiro if I get Kiro on that path that way having a subject there it just looks so good because your eyes are focused on her but subconsciously you're looking at the background which is what I really want you to look at you're looking at all the fog all the trees so it's like it's a double whammy you know what I mean and I'm speaking about subjects if you do not have one being you don't have a dog or you're going completely solo if you can find footsteps like prominent footsteps in the ground that you can visibly see that kind of acts as a subject because that's already emphasizing the leading lines that someone's walking down here you're naturally gonna follow the footsteps so look at this right you can see them very easily in the ground leading up to the fog I want your eyes at the fog but I want to take you there if that makes sense it's like a game, you know, photography. It's all like manipulation to a, to a certain extent, you know, where you want their eyes to go and you create trails and paths to get there. So um, as I'm walking along, I just really wanted to emphasize kind of what I look out for when doing moody photography. The main things I look out for are overcast days. That's the first rule of thumb. And I say that because that sets the tone for everything, right? Now think about it. If it's sunny outside, you don't, your brain doesn't associate sunny, right? With being moody. When you see sun, you're happy. You're like, oh my gosh, it's so bright and beautiful out. So moody is the opposite of that. Now when it's overcast outside and there's no sun, already the tone is set. So that's the first rule of thumb. Having fog on top of that is a bonus. The next thing is always having rich blacks and in my opinion having your photo a little underexposed to create that moody look, to have a bit of a darker image, right? You still want it nicely exposed but you want it to be a bit darker, a bit mysterious, a bit like you're trying to figure it out. So look at this as an example. Look at the trees. Look how rich in black they are. They stand out. The contrast is so nice. All right, look at that. Look at them. So nice, the contrast, especially with the snow and the mist being white. And I say underexpose the image a little bit to emphasize those shadows, to emphasize the blacks in the trees and whatever you're doing. You can always brighten your image up in post, but having it overexposed kind of goes back to that sunny, 
example, right? When it's sunny, it's all happy and, and bright. When we're looking for moody, a bit darker, a bit richer, a bit underexposed. Those are things I definitely, definitely apply to every single moody image I take. Okay. Okay. Oh my God. Holy. Holy. Look at this. If this isn't the Pacific Northwest, then I don't know what is. Like, this is why I can't wait to go to Seattle or BC, places like this. You just see this only daily. Uh, let's get some more shots. All right, guys, last little clip here. Um, I just wanted to kind of finish off this adventure part before I see you in Lightroom with and kind of maximize what you have. Like it doesn't need to be raining, it doesn't need to be foggy or overcast out to get moody photography. When I shoot 90% of the times, it's not raining and it's not, there's no mist, there's no fog, there's not too much here in this city. But it is overcast, like I said before. So on those days, I literally look at the, um, the weather app, right? And I'll look like in a week in advance. On those days that it's overcast, I know for sure if I want moody photography, I'm shooting on those days, regardless if it's raining or not. So I just want to like, kind of clear this up to say um, it does not need to be raining, it does not need to be foggy. It's nice, but it doesn't have to be. So yeah, that's it. I'm gonna see you guys in Lightroom to edit up a cuddle, to edit up a couple of these moody photos. See you then, peace. All right guys, what is up? We are back in my room and we have Lightroom right here. So we have about 15, 20 images edited up back over here and we have the two I'm going to edit up right here. All right, I think I'm actually gonna only edit up one. I just wanna keep this quick. If we have time, we might do two. So let's get straight to it. Start from the bottom and work on our way up. So we are first going to get some grain going. Maybe go 30% and the size 30%. Set the tone, never go over 50% for grain, otherwise it looks too muddy. Um, all right, profile corrections. Mm, yeah, actually. Yeah, actually, you know what? I kind of like it, yeah. All right, you know what? We're gonna keep it, we're gonna go with it. Sharpness, let's bring that up to about 50%. Kabang! I actually really dig this, man, this uh, this angle like this. Oh, it's so much better. Okay, so we're gonna ignore the HSL tab for now. They're not gonna manipulate colors. Let's go up to Tone Curve. Let's get a nice S curve, bring those blacks up to about 7%, and clip the whites about 7%. Um, we just wanna crush the blacks, fade it, and bring the whites down a bit, right? We don't want it pure white. Okay, let's get some contrast going. Let's bring the blacks down around 20%. The whites up around 20%. Really bring out that snow, right? The contrast in the dark trees and the white snow. Okay, now let's bring up shadows. The trees are a little, they're a little too dark. So we wanna bring up more detail in them, right? Let's bring it up about 20% and highlights are looking okay. Let's further this contrast by about 20. Um, and bring up the exposure, because I always shoot underexposed, like I said in the video, right? Keep those details in the shadows and blacks. So, maybe around 30% looks good to me. That is cool. Let's get some more contrast. And now we can bring down the highlights, because when, when you expose the image, everything is gonna get exposed, right? And um, the highlights are a little strong. There, bring it down about 20%. That, we can actually bring the blacks down a bit more. Give it a bit more of a grounding. Um, yeah, and shadows, bring it up. See, it's all these little tweaks here and there, right? And again, guys, I come back to my photos at least two or three times to retouch them up at different times, right? So it's never a one take, like, oh, that's it. Very, very rarely. Okay, so now the next thing I wanna do is, if you guys can see, we have these three little stump looking things near Kiro. So we have this little branch we got this stump and this guy now I don't recommend doing this all the time or I don't recommend relying on this and I try not to, and I really don't do it in many of my images but sometimes if you can you need to and that's spot removal so that's actually taking things out of the image and I do that only when it's taken away from the image taking away from the story so here's what I mean if we have Kira right that's the subject that's the focal point if we have these little branches and stumps around her, that's kind of taking away from me. Your eyes are gonna look at that opposed to Kiro. And I want your eyes to look at her, right? I don't want them to wander off. That's why I take them out. 
Um, if it's not taken away from the image, then I'm gonna keep it. So we're gonna click this guy right here. And we are simply, let's bring the size of the brush a little bit. It's actually very, very simple. We are just going to draw a little line over what we want gone. And then it's gonna replace it with a different part of the image. Um, right there, look, ready? Boom, gone. Can you zoom back out? Can't even tell something was gone. And the reason I say don't rely on it is because it's not the most reliable thing. Basically meaning it can look too photoshopped at times. You can tell it's you took something out, right? If, if you're not careful. So be careful, okay? You can't always get away with it. That's why I say don't rely on it. In uh, the actual shoot, if you can get around it, get around it. But what am I gonna do? Like move the stump? I can't, dude, it's, it's stuck in there. That's when I recommend to do it. All right, next one. Kabang, done. And now, see that one you can't even tell. This one you can see a little bit if you're close up, but it's all right. Final one, this guy right here. Let's get rid of you. It works nice on very even backgrounds. So like water, snow, grass, but when, it's, when the textures are very different, like it's water mixed with sand, mixed with this, it's, it's hard, man. Like, that's why I say again, don't rely on it, you know? All right, let's move. And you can always move it a little bit. Let's move it down to the snow. And, huh. Okay, let's see this. There, look at that, boom. You can't even see them. You can't see them. With outdoor photography, it works well because there's so many things in the image. You, no one's gonna spot that, you know what I mean? All right, so we have that. Now, looking at this image, it still is a little underexposed. Let's bring it up about 10. Contrast, we can bring that up to about 30. And ba, 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 ba. highlights are a bit bright. Bring that down to about 30. All right, that's looking good to me, man. Like that is kind of it right there. I might even crush the blacks a bit more, give it a bit more of a faded look. About, yeah, about 10. About 10. Bring down the highlights a bit. And uh, bring down the blacks a little bit. That is pretty much it. That is pretty much the end of the photo. It's, uh, it's nothing crazy. My edits are very simple, straight to the point. And I don't want it to be too processed. Like I just want, I want the edit to be quick. I want to be outdoors shooting. That's what, that's what I want to do. So that is it guys. I'm just going to edit up the one photo because I don't want this voiceover to be too long. Um, thank you guys so much. Um, I guess I can actually do the outro right here, right? This is so cool. I'm so used to that. All right. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate you guys uh, watching this. And if you learned something or liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. Um, subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. It's all on outdoor photography and lifestyle. So Thanks again so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Much love. Peace. Thank you.